Hey there, beloved of God, welcome to this video. And this is going to be a new mini series. Uh, and this mini series I want to spend on the topic of time. Or you could say the same thing the chronology from Adam to Christ, to the return of Christ. However, I will do that not through um, uh, a presentation slideshow, but I will do it only uh, with a spreadsheet, so with an overview, so that you can also see the whole picture as much as possible. This is not going to take as long as the first one, and I would say the, the real one, because there I have presented um, much more information. So here I'm going to summarize everything, but still uh, it's going to provide you with a total view of uh, uh, the time out of scripture only, of course, only scripture, the time from the creation of Adam to the return of Christ and even a little bit beyond that. So to the 6,000th year from Adam. And this is important because we realize that we are getting closer and closer to the snatching away. This is very uh, relevant, obviously. And uh, we also know that the snatching away doesn't have anything to do with time or, or, or signs because Jew wants signs, not us. However, still we could use chronology uh, which is especially for Israel but we could use that to see where we are on God's timeline we can do that and we will do that in this mini series well um, I would say let's start this is uh, going to be the spreadsheet um, I'll be working from so first, obviously, we will start with the assumptions and findings. These are so important. They, they, these are fundamentally important. Why? Because without these, you don't have a, a guideline, so to speak, how to, how to view things and also how to look at uh, uh, some, some, some aspects of this chronology. So it's very important. Otherwise, you also will not calculate the correct way, the scriptural way. Again, these are only scriptural. Um, this is only scriptural point of depart um, departure and not secular. Let's go through it and then we will see that automatically. The first one, as I already mentioned, there is no connection to the common eras according to history as we know it, so to speak. Uh, no source outside of scripture whatsoever. Secondly, no support from the chronology of Manetho and Ptolemy um, because these guys also have hidden agendas or they had hidden agendas and they were pushing things uh, because they wanted to, um, let's say they wanted to appear very successful in history and that's why they had an agenda to manipulate the chronology in terms of their reign as an example so there's only one exception so normally I always work with a Septuagint uh, when it comes to the uh, Hebrew scriptures translated in Greek the Septuagint to me is the most reliable translation and also we know that even the, the believers in the New Testament, in the Greek scriptures, like Peter and Paul, etc., also used the Septuagint uh, for the, uh, as the Greek scriptures of the Hebrew scriptures, in the, of the so-called Old Testament. So, uh, so the Septuagint is much more reliable. However, however, there's only one aspect that is not reliable from the Septuagint, and those are the ages of the patriarchs. So the, the pre-flood patriarchs and the, the first 
part of the afterflood patriarchs, those are manipulated by those rabbis, those 70 rabbis in Alexandra, uh, Alexandria. So let's read it. Only for the ages of the patriarchs, I have worked with the Masoretic text, not with the Septuagint, because it is not reliable due to, again, there you have it, uh, political interests of the Alexandrian leadership. That's why. It's very simple. Give me humans and I will show you mistakes. Point D. The period length assumption is a very important one to calculate the right way, i.e. the scriptural way. What does it mean? That means that scripture counts um, a part of a year as a whole year. What do I mean by that? In our Western culture, we are used to, um, let's say I am, um, my third birthday was in the past and my fourth birthday is in the future, as an example. So in the Western culture, in our culture, we would say, I am three years old, right? And I have to become four years. Even uh, if I am three years old and 364 days, I am still three years old. And on my uh, fourth year, uh, on my fourth birthday, let me put it correctly, then I, am four, then I became four years of age. In the scriptural way, it is the opposite. It's totally the, the, the other side around. And that means that if I am, uh, if my third birthday is in the past and my fourth is in the future, then according to scripture, scriptural notation, I am four years old. That means I am in my fourth year. That's how scripture uh, uh, it, that's the writing the writing notation of scripture that means of course again that if I am three years old and one day I am four years old according to scripture and also of course still four years uh, if I am three years old and 364 days on my fourth birthday I am formally four years of age but then the next day, I am five years old, according to scripture. So very important to keep that in mind. Otherwise, you will make mistakes from the get-go. So, mostly it's the case, and that's how we also calculate it in this chronology. A part of a year is counted an, as a whole year, and what we did is then to solve this, we have uh, worked with half a year as average which with, with ages and periods. So when it says, when scripture says, Adam was 130 years old when he begot Seth, then we calculated with 129.5 years. Because we know that at 130 year old, that means that he is in his 130th year according to scripture i hope you understand this very important so we count with half of that year of that 130th year and that is 129.5.5 okay we continue another one very important there are no gaps in god's timeline so in scripture we found all the um, all the indications in terms of God's timeline and we we use we use them as well by the way before I um, um, before I continue I talk about we because in this case I've done this spreadsheet however the the sources uh, the most important source I took it from is from my friend and brother in Christ Andre Piet from goodbericht.nl so he is the one who started this study. I, I also used his study. However, I made uh, changes because uh, I have a different viewpoint 
with regard to some important aspects around the 70th week or even the 70 weeks of Daniel as such. Uh, maybe I will mention it when we get there. Okay, so there is no gap in timeline. No gap at all. So everything is to the T connected on from Adam, from the creation of Adam until the return of Christ and beyond. This is a huge one also. This is huge. Without this, you will go uh, astray again from the get-go. Because everything is calculated by God in jubilee cycles. Jubilee cycles of 50 years. That's a jubilee cycle. So you have sabbatical cycles. That is 49 years. And you have jubilee cycles. That is an extra year. So how was uh, how uh, did God instruct Israel in terms of the sabbatical years? Uh, the, he instructed them to have six years of um, of working, six years of sowing and reaping and harvesting, and the seventh year would be the Sabbath Sabbath year in which they are not allowed to work, to let, they have to let the ground rest. So that's every seven years like that. That was God's instruction. Uh, and after seven cycles of sabbatical uh, years, I would say, have elapsed, we get to a total of uh, 49 years, right? Seven times seven. And that 49 years is the closing of a sabbatical cycle as such. However, um, there is after that, af after every 49 years, there is a jubilee year. And according to quite some Bible scholars, that jubilee year needs to be regarded as the first year of the next sabbatical cycle of 49 years. And... I say that is not correct. The Jubilee year is to be regarded as a separate year for it is holy. That you read in uh, that you can read in Leviticus 25 verse 10. The Jubilee year is to be regarded as holy, meaning set apart, set apart. So it is apart from that 49 year cycle. It's a part. So it is a 50th year uh, making the, the cycle, the Jubilee cycle complete. So I hope this is clear because God calculates with Jubilee cycles in, throughout the whole chronology. So it is very structured and very symmetrical. Okay. Also, a very important assumption is that uh, our timeline goes through Judea, the two tribes, not through Israel, the ten tri tribes, or the northern part of Israel. They were, um, they were uh, conquered by Assyria um, de uh, not e e even centuries before um, the... Judea was uh, gone into exile in Babylon but uh, also the kings in the northern part of Israel the ten tribes they were all godless they all built high places and uh, uh, performed adultery and idolatry so um, it's about Judea that's it's that is that's going to be the timeline we will use and th those uh, kings there are some uh, ex positive exceptions but most of the kings they also did not obey God so what is the part of the findings we will see in this chronology a defined design of three times two millennia, millenniums, meaning six days or six millenniums. As you know, uh, God calculates with, with one day as thousand years. It's not only 
a saying in terms of, oh, God doesn't know time or is above time, which is true in itself, but it's also a certain ratio that God uses. Otherwise, he would mention a different ratio. So please keep that in mind. We will see that as well. Also, we will see that there are four times 500 years, 10 Jubilee cycles from, uh, so four times 10 Jubilee cycles from cre the creation of Adam to the death of Noah and the birth of Abram. It's very interesting because uh, 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 Noah died in the same year that Abram was born. That says a lot and that's in the year 2000 from Adam. It says a lot because again it talks about the end of the first the old um, how do you say that the old era of which Noah was the patriarch especially the the pre-flood era and Abraham is the patriarch of the uh, of the current uh, eon you could say uh, and of, of course where Israel plays a dominant part very important and uh, that also where the body of Christ started the body of Christ started with um, the with being of the seed of Abraham in a figurative way of course as Paul explains that in Romans 4 especially so keep that in mind as well So also we will see that there are f uh, four times 500 years or 2,000 years from the birth of Abram to the would-be 70th week of Daniel, which is the day or the ending of the stoning of Stephen. And that moment is a very memorable moment of course, we will go through that as well. But keep in mind, again, 2,000 years, exactly, exactly. And you will see in this chronology that there is symmetry in many periods. We will find that there are two days or approximately 2,000 years from the ascension of Jesus Christ to his father in heaven to his return to the return of christ on the clouds with much power and great glory i'm talking i'm not talking about the snatching away i'm talking about the visible return of uh, jesus christ and i think the last one is that we will find that there are six millenniums in which mankind has governed the earth and failed miserably culminating in the seventh millennium or the seventh day the day of rest and peace in which Jesus Christ will govern the earth and he will succeed so this is until here uh, and then we will start with the chronology itself okay so let's start with the chronology um, first of all let me explain how this overview works very briefly so there are four columns the description so there you see everything um, around that particular event we see the length in years of that particular event let's say the reign of David then you see here 40 because R David reigned 40 years the year AH after Adam or from Adam uh, I would rather say the year from Adam so this is the cumulative year so to speak and this is the year AD it also includes BC so when it has when it when it's a year 1300 BC then you see minus 1300 AD here it's very simple very straightforward so let's start I know we are already at uh, 20 minutes but let's do a little bit here 
First of all, obviously, Adam was created. That's how it started. When was he created? Just a matter of calculation. In the year 3966 BC. I will say BC, which, which is, of course, easier. You recognize that. So, Adam created. Second event. Adam begot Seth. When he was 130 years old, Genesis 5.3. By the way, after every event, you will see a scripture for a uh, scripture reference. Obviously, everything has scripture references. So, he was 130 years old. And remember the assumptions that we have calculated with. We use 129.5 because according to scripture, Adam's age uh, means he was in his 130th year meaning not yet rounded not yet complete he was in his 130th year which we use as 129.5 and of course this is going to be the same since this is from Adam and this is of course the calculation of uh, 3966 minus 129.5 Okay, now we'll go with a bit quicker. Seth begot Enos, verse 6, when he was 105 years old. Right? So, this calculates to 234 from Adam. Enos begot Kenan. Kenan um, is the fourth from uh, Adam when he was Enos was uh, 90 years old when he begot Kenan according to first 9 Genesis 5 9 Kenan begot Mahalalel in first 12 when he was 70 years old Mahalalel begot Jared in first 15 when he was 65 years old. However, Jared is the sixth from Adam. Six being the number of man as well. And wouldn't it be interesting to tell you that in the days of Jared, the disobedient messengers came on the earth. <coughs> And they mated with the daughters of uh, humans and they got children and those children began, began to be giants in the earth. So, and those are the so-called Nephilim. So it was in the days of Jared when that started to happen, so to speak. When huge sin was multiplying on the earth number six after adam interesting right number seven is enoch jared begot enoch when he was 162 years of age and enoch is the seventh from adam and enoch walked with god he was a prophet uh, first uh, 18 by the way enoch was a prophet and as a prophet he kept warning about the great judgment that God would send if they would continue in their evil. And what happened? They continued in their evil. Of course. And it was so bad that God had to take away Enoch. He took away Enoch and he replaced Enoch in another place on earth and my suspicion I cannot corroborate it I cannot prove it from scripture but my suspicion is that Enoch was transponed uh, uh, or, or transferred you could say uh, to the Garden of Eden because the Garden of Eden was guarded by two um, by two what is the name um, Seraphim and you have the Ah, oh, I cannot find the name. Ah, I'm sorry. You have Seraphim and Cherubim. Cherubim, sorry. Um, so two Cherubim were guarding the Garden of Eden. So no one could enter. 
But I think that Enoch entered the Garden of Eden. However, God protected him there. But I'm not sure. It could be. It could also be another place where there were no humans because I think they were on the verge of killing Enoch uh, when he, because he said things that they didn't want to hear, right? That's why. That's why. And did that change today? No. People still kill the ones that are saying things that they don't want to hear and you will see that in the near future as well with the two witnesses let's continue enoch begot methuselah another interesting one because methuselah appeared to be the longest living human in scripture and in reality also up till now the longest living human he, he became 969 years of age why is that significant because the name methuselah given by enoch in verse 21 means this when he dies it shall come when he dies it shall come what is the he that's methuselah what is the it that is the judgment the great judgment by god so when methuselah would die then god would send the judgment and that of course definitely happened so uh, that's why god showed his mercy and his patience his huge patience by making methuselah the, the longest living human being on earth because that also means immediately that it shows that god had waited and waited and waited before he sent the flood because that was the great judgment methuselah begot lamech and i think we will stop here lamech was the father of noah lamech is the ninth from adam in verse 25 he was uh, methuselah was 187 when he begot lamech or lamech lamech and this was the year 870 from adam so let's keep it wow at 27 second uh, 27 minutes and i will continue in the next video thanks for watching bye bye